Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Nerd Locker, a place for your inner nerd. My name is Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And this is episode 51. Yay! This week we have some Captain America news, some James Bond news, and of course, as always, some more Batman news. So, let's get to it. While out doing promotional stuff for his new movie, Puncture, Chris Evans was uh, candidly chatting about playing Captain America, and it looks like he has signed a six-picture deal with Marvel. Yeah, it looks awesome. From, from the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be three Captain America, three Avengers, which yeah. s sounds about right. It seems like and pretty I, good. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are wondering about the whole cameo stuff, but I guess that would count as a movie. Even if it's 10 minutes, five minutes, 30 seconds, whatever. 30 seconds on, on screen. He said Marvel would owe him, what was it, 30 No, no, no. If, if they came to do a third Cap movie, he said that he would say, F you, give me $30 million to do it. Which is kind of cool, but it sounded like he was talking with his homies yeah, and not was... like reporters, but he was talking to a reporter, which is really weird. I like how but, he just laid back here. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, whatever. Just give me another 30 mil. I'll be Captain America. <laughs> It's kind of cool, but uh, but also he went on to talk about his costume in the new movie, in the, in the Avengers movie, and how it. a lot of people are giving him flack or giving the production flack, but really it's, it's Joss Whedon's design. He approved it, I should say, um, and he's probably the biggest fanboy. Chris Evans has said he's the biggest fanboy out of yeah, all of us. Yeah, so. that's the guy you want to make happy. Exactly. So if he's so, happy, everyone else is happy. I think everyone else should be happy. It makes sense. I like it. It's like the old traditional costume, all sleek and I modernized. I like it. I have no problem with it. Yeah, neither do I. I mean, and you know they're going to give other costumes later on. So Oh, they're going to we'll tweak see. it. Well, of course. Every movie is going to get a different costume. So we'll see what happens. Let us know what you guys think. Are you excited? Is this awesome or not awesome? Should we stop talking about it? Let us know. Hey, Brandon. Yes, Jasmine? Do you know who I love? Who do you love? Daniel Craig. I love Daniel Craig. Who doesn't love Daniel Craig? Crazy people. Mm -hmm. You know who else I love? Who else do you love, Jasmine? John Logan, who happens to be writing the next Bond movie and has finally come out and said that he might be writing in the iconic villain, Blofeld. He was uh, quoted as saying that Bond should always fight Blofeld, and I guess that's kind of the teaser we're getting for the villain in the next one. And if you look at it, over the past two movies that we've seen, this sort of shadowy, shadowy. company, Quantum, obviously, has sort of been around, but you've never seen the big man upstairs nope. just like shadowy middleman. So... I think that's a great idea. I think it's a man with a cat. Yep. I think that could be awesome. I mean, you're I taking an iconic character and introducing him into this new Bond-verse, which has already put out two awesome Amazing movies. Amazing movies. I see nothing but good news for this. I'm just happy that Daniel Craig is back. Oh, who? Come on. He is James Bond. It's funny because I know he's older, but I just, he is the James Bond to me. I agree. Does all his own stunts. Come on. Everyone calm down. Catwoman has cat ears, okay? <gasps> Pictures were released finally with uh, Anne Hathaway with a full thing on. And yeah, I guess that's the end of her costume. Looks like it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just going to come out there and say it. I have no problem with this. She's got cat ears. It doesn't bother me either. I mean, it, of course, it does kind of seem like kind of weird because it's like a cat burglar. Ha, ha, ha. But at the same time, it's still just like, hey, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're really nitpicking the costumes, that means the movie was absolutely incredible. So I'll take that. Yeah, that's win. true. If that's the only thing you can pinpoint, then I'm, I'm going to be pretty happy. But <laughs> as well as her cat ear pictures, it looks like they, uh, a picture surfaced of Bane's doomsday device. Looks like the thing he's going to take down Gotham with. I'm assuming is a bomb? Yeah. It's like I, a bomb to me. It looks like something from space to me, which I really think would be really cool. Really, really. But it just looks like some sort of satellite that would release some sort of doomsday device, like a laser or something, which I hope they don't do a laser, but something involving space, I just think would be fun and cool. But. I just... Like I said, broken record, everything looks awesome. Everything looks <laughs> awesome coming out for Batman. Yeah. Okay, so The Shining, horrifying movie, horrifying book. Yes, this you has know. been established. Well, it looks like they're doing a sequel to the book. Stephen King is going to be writing it. Awesome. Yeah, and you know, I was a little skeptical. Yeah. How's that going to correlate? Well, it's going to be a grown-up Danny Torrance traveling with a group of vampires. Yeah, a band of vampires. That's that what really you know what? got me. First time I got through The Shining, I thought vampires need to make this scarier. <laughs> no, Shining alone is scary enough. It's 
It's why like, do you need uh, a sequel? Why, why just call? Why just write? It's a ghosts new and book? poltergeists and things like making you go crazy and like, is it really just you going crazy from being Captain Fever and stuff? Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> vampires! How do they fit into this? I, I have just, no idea. I want to know why he didn't just say, "I'm gonna write a book about a kid traveling the thing of vampires." Like, that could be a separate story. Why did you need? I I, I don't Lost know. Lost Boys Two. I don't know, man. Lost Boys Six at this point, I guess. Yeah, Whatever. Just my do head that on story this one. instead, Stephen King. But Whatever. I, we'll see how it is. It, I mean, he wrote the first story. This is the best person to write the second story. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. So who knows? This might be the next greatest horror book ever. Maybe the scary, next scariest J Jack Nicholson movie. <laughs> so it seems there's been some leaked information on this new Superman, Man of Steel movie, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Looks like um, it. The new Zack Snyder production is actually, it's been shown that jor costume, Russell Crowe, what he's wearing, he's actually going to be looking a little beard and hair-wise like Obi-Wan from Attack of the Clones. Okay. Uh, so like the mullet, crazy beard, the, 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 yeah, yeah, the, what's his name? Kenny, Kenny Rogers' beard? Yeah, we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Kenny Rogers' beard. Anyways, so he's going to be looking like that, but his, his suit, it's like armor, and it's similar to uh, Master Chief from Halo, and it has like the, the traditional S, and it's a white, goldish So he's like to more... It. More warrior than scientist. On yeah, kind that's of what it seems a like. Bit tougher. Yeah, like he can take it, or yeah, it's like, because I'm of their big. I'm gravity. gonna punch things. Ah, oh, but when I don't figure things out in science, huh. science, 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 science. You know yeah. that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen a lot. So, uh, you know what? I think this is a cool original take. I like everything I've seen with the costumes and. Yeah, like, I'm not. I'm not. Not looking forward. And to this honestly, movie. very rarely does a costume ruin a movie for yeah. me. I mean, I, I understand it's a movie. It's going to be a different... I like the little S's on the Superman Returns costume. I don't know. I guess I'm weird that way. But those little tiny S's that were all over the blue part, I didn't, that was I didn't cool to me. Yeah, that remember. was cool. It, it shows he so took if, some if time. If I am nitpicking the costume, it yeah. means the movie was... Horrible. Like, the, or no, the, the movie was that good. Oh, okay, I have okay. nothing to complain about other than the costume. So True. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Well, we already announced that uh, Eddie Murphy will be hosting this year's Oscars. Sadly. And a previous host, Steve Martin, actually wrote Eddie Murphy a letter kind of guiding him and giving him do's some and pointers. Don'ts. Yeah. I loved this letter. It maybe was 300 words at the most. But Steve Martin was like, any mean thing you can do to someone, do to them. Like, when the losers go backstage, give them a pat on the back. It's a riot. Stuff like that. Which makes me love Steve Martin. He even went on to say uh, that while he nor Eddie won any Oscar nominations for their wonderful portrayal of characters in Bowfinger, they really should have. So maybe this is a second I, I chance. I like that. And I also like how he said uh, he's looking a little chunky doing Norbit. Right. Maybe so he should, he should bulk up. <laughs> shave the weight. Steve Martin's hilarious. I love that he actually took the time to write this letter right. and, you know, show it to him. I but. think a lot of people who have hosted the Oscars in the past, have come out the worst for it. Steve even said, don't have a co-host, which sort of points to last Alec year's Baldwin. Oscars. Well, when him and Alec Baldwin did it, exactly. too. Exactly, so. Do you see the bottom where it said, uh, if, you, if you run out of things to say, just throw Neil Patrick Harris some sheet music? Oh, and, and he can go for hours. <laughs> That's great I thought, and yeah. true. So, yeah, good, good little humorous tidbit for you guys this week. The only thing we're waiting for is a response from Eddie Murphy. I'd love to see that. <laughs> so, Bobby, Patty Jenkins is in talks to direct the next Thor movie, and she also directed Monster and then jumped to Entourage and Arrested Development. And that's just versatility to me. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, when I first heard about this news, I heard a lot of people talking about how um, they weren't really excited about it because it was the director of Monster. Mm -hmm. And no one really mentioned that she also did Arrested Development and Entourage and these really great shows. I mean... So, I don't know, Monster was great, I loved it, but uh, what everyone's concern was is that that's a much different type take. of movie. Yeah, a much yeah. different type of movie than Thor is. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, I don't think that, has, that her direct, directing has, not, has anything to do with how Thor is told, honestly. I mean, it's like... Yeah, there's too much already, like, backstory and comic books and yeah, comic and, and, writers having written the books and, yeah, and yeah. the movies that... Yeah, on that note, Don, Don Payne is going to is said to be coming back to co-write the second movie as well. He he co-wrote the first movie with J. Michael Straczynski, um, who is a genius. He, he actually really wrote is. a very 
amazing Thor series back uh, a couple years ago. He and was also in Thor randomly? Yes, yes. And uh, the movie is based off of this series that he wrote. So uh, Don Payne coming back, I, th I think, is, is a good thing. Yeah. And uh, Patty Jenkins, I don't, I don't see as a bad thing at all. I mean, Kevin Feige even came up and said that uh, there's a lot of news as far as um, what the second movie will be about, uh, this, including um, him going to other worlds. That's Which I'm excited sweet. about because visually Thor looked very good, even in 3D. Like it still really maintained a lot of really good artistic value to it. So I don't really think anyone specifically directing it is going to change. Right. Like the wheels are sort of already set in motion for it to be a very specific type of film. So. And to have the backing uh, that they now have from the, f the success of the first movie, I think that the second movie will even look better. I mean, with him traveling to other worlds, other realms, you see a, a, a better um, relationship with him and Odin and possibly a, an even deeper love story with him and Jane Foster. I mean, that would be incredible. I'm, I'm really excited about Thor 2. Tell us what you guys think in the comments below. My pick of the week is going to be a little book called Holy Terror. It came out this week. It's written by Frank Miller, and uh, I love it because of the storyline behind how it happened. Uh, apparently, Frank Miller went to DC, and, they, and he said, I want to write a Batman book. I want to want to write a Batman book about Batman taking down terrorists. DC said, we're not going to touch that. We're going to stay away from that as, as much as we can. And Frank Miller said, well, then I'll do it myself. He created a very Batman-esque character uh, to go out and take out terrorists himself. I highly recommend it. The art's a little iffy. It's uh, the same artist from uh, The Dark Knight Strikes Again, um, which is one of none. It's not my favorite at all. And uh, the art's, like I said, iffy, but the book's very good. I'm going to recommend it highly. Hey there, nerds. Jasmine here with my pick of the week, and it is this really awesome wood-carved Princess Jasmine statue that my mom bought me for my birthday, because apparently when you turn 21, you need Disney traditionals, which I don't really love right now. It's pretty, and I like it a lot. However, when I'm like 60, it'll be like one of my favorite things ever, I'm sure. Thank you, Mom. It's gorgeous, and I'm a princess. Hey, guys. Cubby here with my pick this week. It's Spotify, especially the mobile app that I just downloaded. Um, for those not in the know, Spotify is a free music app uh, similar to what like Napster and things were, like, were supposed to be, music sharing, but it's not the illegal route. It's completely legal. Um, it's free. Um, if you get the invite to use it online and on your computer, um, you have to pay, though, to get the mobile app and to be able to use it on the go, streaming, things like that. Um, there's also an offline mode to where it can sync up to your phone. And this is only available if you're paying. It's only $10 a month, which if, if you're buying music on the regular, it totally saves you money. If you're always stealing your music or always downloading it from torrents or whatever, you can totally get it there. It's just the easier, safer way to do it. Um, another reason I, I got it and I wanted to try it out was uh, you're able to share with your friends and you're able to put it into your, whatever songs, albums, artists you want. You can put it in their inbox and they'll have it for whenever they come onto their computer. And it's, it's really fun. There's a cool instructional video once you go on, a, on the website um, if I didn't give you all the information you wanted. Um, but definitely check it out. It's called Spotify Mobile. And it's Steven here with my pick of the week. I'm picking Home Movies because it is now on instant streaming on Netflix. I love this show. I used to watch it all the time, but it had been so long since I watched it. So I started watching the first episode. Paula Poundstone does the voice of the mom, and I love her as a comedian because I'm a giant NPR fan and she's always on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. So I got so excited for that as well as the fact that I love Home Movies. So if you've never seen it or you used to love it and you just haven't watched it in a while, Netflix Instant Streaming has all of them. Check it out. Hey guys, Brandon here with my pick this week. It was going to be my pick last week, but you know, history happened. So uh, it was Cubby's last week, but it's mine this week. Start from scratch, the new album from Pacifier. This is hands down my band of the year. They are one of the most incredible groups of musicians I've ever seen. They blow me away with each song I hear, every new album. This, this thing was just awesome, and it's cool that I got a whole week to kind of let this set in. Favorite album I've heard so far this year. Please, please, please go pick it up. It's available on iTunes. It's called Start From Scratch by Pacifier. All right, that's going to do it for episode 51. But until next week, be sure to check us out at nerdlocker.com, our Twitter, our Facebook, and, of course, our YouTube page. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Brandon. And you guys have a nerdy week.